So this video is the continuation of the previous video where we talked about the electrical activity of a pacemaker cell, but this is more in depth, in detail, and talking about the specific parts of the pacemaker action potential. So we already established from the previous video that there is a slow depolarization until it reaches threshold for the pacemaker cell, right? There's a slow depolarization. Now I want to divide this slow depolarization phase into two phases. Let's say there's the early phase and then there is the late phase, right? Quite clear in that sense. So what is responsible for this slow depolarization at the early phase of the action potential of a pacemaker cell. Three things are responsible. Number one, opening of the uh, opening of the funny channels. So opening of the sodium and the potassium funny channels. So opening of the sodium and potassium funny channels. Number two, opening of the calcium channels. They're not funny channels, they're just opening of the calcium channels. So number two, opening of the calcium channels. And number three, closing of the potassium channels. So opening of the sodium and the potassium funny channels, opening of the calcium channels, these are all positive ions, which is going to make entering of these ions is going to make the cell more and more depolarized. But closing of the potassium channels is going to make the, more, the cell more depolarized because there is less uh, negative, uh, because potassium has a membrane potential negative, a negative membrane potential, but sodium, potassium, and calcium has a positive membrane potential. So entering more potassium ions into the cell is going to create a negative uh, membrane potential, which is going to be not depolarization, which is going to be the opposite of depolarization or hyperpolarization. Okay, so so this is what's happening at the very early stages of the depolarization. But I already told you that I divided that into two sections. So this is this green part right here. But what's happening in this, the last stage of uh, this slow depolarization just before threshold? What's happening there? So what's happening at the very end of this slow, de slow spontaneous depolarization is that the opening of the funny channels is actually stimulating opening of another type of channels. And there is stimulation of opening of a certain type of voltage-gated um, calcium channels, okay, when it's almost reaching threshold. And those voltage-gated calcium channels are called T-type calcium channels. So this last region is, uh, this last region of spontaneous depolarization is achieved by T-type calcium channels, opening of the T-type calcium channels, which are also voltage-gated calcium channels. Now at this region, the funny channels are not opening anymore. Um, that last bit of push is achieved by the T-type calcium channels, and by that time, the funny channels are already closed. So the funny channels were only responsible for the initial rise of the slow depolarization of the action potential. So with the help of the T-type calcium channels, the voltage-gated T-type calcium channel, the last bit of depolarization is achieved, and it reaches threshold, and action potential is generated. Now this action potential, from here onwards, what type of channels are responsible for the, this action potential? Now this action potential is generated by another type of voltage-gated calcium channels, and those are called L-type. So the, the, the last bit was achieved by T-type. The beyond threshold, though, it, this is achieved by L-type calcium channels. So opening of the L-type voltage-gated calcium channels is responsible for the rapid depolarization of the action potential. Now there are some sodium channels which are also open. Also open here. 
Some sodium channels also open at this level, which is also responsible for some uh, some of the depolarization is also achieved by the some of the opening of the uh, sodium channels along with the voltage-gated calcium channels. But they're really mostly uh, calcium channels. Now, that is depolarization. Now, once the cell is depolarized, now we have to bring it back down. How do we hyperpolarize the cell now? How do we repolarize and hyperpolarize the cell? Now, that is achieved by, see how there was closing of the potassium channels? Closing of the potassium channels help with the depolarization. Now, with the repolarization or hyperpolarization, we are going to be needing potassium channels again. So now we are going to open, opening of potassium channels is going to bring the membrane poten potential back to negative, which is responsible for this phase of the action potential. So at the very beginning, we had the potassium channels closed. At the very end, we have the potassium channels open. So then more potassium can come in, make the cell more, more negative. So just to wrap up and a quick review, opening the very beginning of the slow depolarization was achieved by opening of the funny channels and opening of the calcium channels and closing of the potassium channels, which close but they trigger the opening of the T-type calcium channels, which are also voltage-gated calcium channels, which is tr opening of those channels is tr triggered by the sodium and the potassium funny channels. But once it opens, the funny channels close. Now this hits the threshold, and as soon as threshold is hit, hits, another uh, type of channels are open, which are the L-type calcium channels, which is responsible for the rapid upswing and action potential is generated. Once action potential is generated, the cell is hyperpolarized by making the cell more negative, by opening the potassium channels, which brings more potassium inside the cell, and that is going to hyperpolarize our cell.